If you're anything like me, there's plenty of times where you feel like you can never get your painting right. Sometimes everything just seems wrong or off, from the color or hue to the proportions or the textures. For example, on a portrait, you may wish you painted that hair in differently, or now you're noticing that that right eye just seems a bit too low, and just that constant and nagging thought that this painting looks nowhere near as good as I thought it would. Now a very common message that I get on here is from people telling me that they've been trying really, really hard to paint like a specific artist that they admire. That artist makes it look so easy, and when I try, it comes out nothing like the original. Now I see this type of comment often, and I 100% relate and empathize with it because I'm no different. So my theory or guess about this is that it causes a lot of us to become scared that we'll never be able to paint like we want. And it's probably the primary reason so many new artists give up or just burn out. A very good and smart artist from Mississippi once said that the basest of all things is to be afraid. And I think this applies very well to the point that I'm trying to get across here. So if you, like me, get that feeling that you're not improving or progressing within your art, I have a suggestion for you that might be helpful, and that's to try creating a study rather than a painting. Now, what's the difference between the two? On one hand, a painting and a study are the exact same thing. They're just pigments applied to a surface. But on the other hand, the major thing that separates the two is that a painting is a work for others to see, while a study is painted for no one else but yourself. One way to think of it is that it's basically a practice work, one where you get to fully experiment, try new and advanced techniques, and most importantly, allow yourself to fail. Now I'm well aware that this probably doesn't sound like fun or is all that encouraging, but that's not the point because if you set up a study knowing that you don't need to finish it, it doesn't need to be right or correct, and that it doesn't even have to be good, it takes a lot of the fear away from painting. And as the name study implies, it allows you to learn. An example of this is what you're looking at on the screen right now. A few weeks ago, I posted a poll on the members page asking them what they wanted to paint next. The choices were in between a photorealistic painting of a car or a portrait of an older woman so that we could focus on learning how to paint wrinkles and advanced skin textures. Now I've painted plenty of cars and airplanes in the past, but the way that I've always painted them was using opaque paints. I realized that I never fully painted a vehicle like a car or an airplane using only transparent colors. So I decided that I wanted to practice this technique and kind of push myself to see if I'm able to do it. So I decided to paint a study. So the painting of this Mustang that you're looking at right now is exactly that. It's a practice piece. I allowed myself to try some different techniques, experiment, and not at all be concerned if I fail or mess up. And I actually learned a lot from painting this little study. The main thing I learned is that my gut instinct was right and that it's a lot easier to paint this in realistically if you're using only opaque colors. I found the transparent colors to be way too unforgiving and that the texture you get from erasing into them works very well for something organic like skin texture or a portrait but doesn't work well on something like the paint on a car. So what I learned from this study is that when I do the real painting for this channel, I'm gonna be using opaque paints rather than transparents. So if you're learning how to paint with oils or an airbrush like what we do on this channel, or even if you're learning how to draw, here's some tips for setting up a study. First of all, there's no rules for painting a study, but since I'm usually not going to fully complete it, I'll generally paint it on a cheaper surface. For me, I'll generally use something like a piece of MDF or a very inexpensive panel rather than a fully prepared canvas that took me a day or so to set up. But you could paint this on any surface you like. Sometimes it's good to save some money just by using a less expensive surface. But again, no rules for this. Now try to think of something to paint that just seems way too difficult. The more challenging, the better. Because remember, this is about learning, not creating a perfect painting. It could be a painting of one of your family members, maybe your dog or cat, or a copy of your favorite painting. As long as it seems difficult or hard to paint, anything is fair game. And to make it interesting, try to pick something that's very important to you, something that you care about. So here's my example. A painting that's always been very important to me is a portrait called The Princess de Brulee by Dominique Ang. It's a 19th century neoclassical oil painting, and it's located at the Metropolitan Museum of Art here in New York. Some of you may love this painting like I do, some of you may hate it, and some of you might just be apathetic toward it. And I've said this before a million times on my other videos, but to me, any opinion on a painting or a work of art is always valid and fair because the subjectivity of art is what makes it so special. About a year ago, I decided to see if I can get an acrylic painting using an airbrush and erasers to look like a neoclassical oil painting. So what I decided to do was paint a study of Ang's portrait, copying it to the best of my ability to learn whatever I could. And the final painting came out all right. It's not great. 
I never finished it and I probably never will. And that's kind of the whole point because the reason I painted it was to learn from one of the painters that I admire. And learn is the key word here. Throughout the painting, I tried to remind myself that it was never about trying to paint a perfect copy. And if it came out awful or if I failed, so what? It's not a big deal. It was a learning experience and I moved on to the next painting. So if you find yourself struggling with your painting techniques like we all do, I encourage you to try painting a study and use it as an exercise to enjoy painting and to learn from. And for those of you who are just getting into art and don't know that much art history yet, this is nothing new. Artists have been using studies to help them learn since the beginning. Most artists will try to save some time and some money by making their study out of simple materials like paper, pencils, and ink. So you'll see a lot of sketched and drawn studies throughout art history. So before I wrap up this video, here's a few quick examples. If we go back to the early Italian Renaissance, Michelangelo, who's most known for his sculptures and frescoes, use studies extensively, like this one right here of the Pieta. Now this drawing is a work of art in its own right. Michelangelo is easily one of the greatest artists that ever lived. But you could just see from this drawing how much detail and how much work he put into his studies. Let's move along to someone like Rembrandt, who used to sketch these unbelievable studies. To me, his sketches look so simple in technique, but show an incredible amount of information. And throughout his life, Rembrandt produced countless drawings and studies, and if you get a chance, they're definitely worth checking out. Another artist that I've always been a huge fan of is Jacques-Louis David. About a year ago, the Met had an exhibition called Radical Draftsman, and it was a collection of a ton of David's drawings and studies. The amount of work and detail that he put into his studies was absolutely mind-boggling. This small and detailed painting is a study that David made for one of his most famous paintings, which was called The Oath of the Horatii, and it was accompanied by a second study that you could see right here for the same painting. The original painting hangs in the Louvre in Paris, so for obvious reasons I wasn't able to get any video of it, but on the screen now is a photo. I was, however, able to see two studies for one of my favorite paintings of all time, which is called The Death of Socrates. In this second study, we could just see how much thought that he put into the placement of his figures for his composition. The man who's standing right in the middle of Plato and Socrates is holding a cup of hemlock. And it's really interesting to see David's thought process within this study. The hand of the cupbearer is moved, it's erased out and sketched in multiple times. And it's also obvious here that he was trying out different places for Socrates' legs. And I just wanna remind you that these are studies, these were works intended just for the artist himself, not for others to see. David used these studies to prepare, and for lack of a better word, basically practice for his final painting, which we could see right here on the right. Now I'm oversimplifying a lot of stuff here, but I think this helps prove my point, that creating a study is one of the best ways to improve your paintings. It makes the process of painting less daunting by helping reduce some of that fear of failure, because mistakes are the best teachers you can learn from. I want to say thank you to the members who generously help support this channel. First of all, I'd like to give a shout out and a welcome to the newest channel members, Rick, NH, and Peter, both of which subscribed at tier three. It's really generous of you guys, so thank you. And of course, thank you to the current members who make this channel possible. So thank you, Robin, Pascal, John, Adam, Elnagord, Jan, Christopher, Rick, M. Webb, Leon, Mackie Mark, Mir Creative, SM, Cyril, Michael, Carl, Dwayne, Pete, Ken, Robert, M. Shibley, and Boy, oh God, and one of the oldest members on this channel who changes his name every week. I truly appreciate your support, guys, so thank you so much. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you back here next week.